Praise God, everybody. Good evening to all. Starting another one, uh, diving into the Word of God. And as you can see today, I got... Isabella. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be helping me. Uh, I, I want to thank you for all the prayers. As you know, I had a little injury this past Saturday, right? Mm -hmm. Playing basketball. And uh, thank God it, it's no broken bone. Uh, they didn't rule it out yet, the torn ligaments or, you know, but um, thank God it's no broken bone. So I'm still using the boot. You cannot see, but I got a big boot. And uh, so that's why I have someone to help me. Because you, as you know, on Wednesdays, what we try to do, you really, really get a lot of scripture. We get into the Word of God. And, and I hope you, you have time to write them down. Amen. So uh, if, if you're connected, if the sound is good, the image is good, you just say, you know, everything is good. I see that Ruth Ann is here already. So I want to say hi. Yayo Smart Beleza. Lauren. Uh, Ow, okay, thank you for joining us, uh, and as you know, when we finish the teaching, you are uh, able to share, amen, you're able to share, amen, um, yeah, amen, good deal, so, uh, amen, we're going to pray, <laughs> and we're going to get into the Word of God, are you ready? Yeah, you ready? yeah. <laughs> amen, so why don't you pray, then I'll pray. Okay. Uh, Lord God, we thank you for this evening, Lord, that we're able to just declare your word, Lord, and we ask that you just speak to our hearts and uh, use us, Lord, to speak your truth. Um, and we ask that you just bless Dad and bless this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to connect with people, not only in Effingham, but, uh, you know, in our state and all around the world. I pray that you would anoint our minds and our lips. I pray that we would be connected and that we would be able to hear your voice as we teach, that we would be an instrument to encourage, to bless, to strengthen. We pray for all of those who are in need of healing. We're believing and, and, and praying and standing upon your healing promises. I pray tonight for burdens to be removed, yokes to be destroyed. I pray for the peace of God to permeate and to be released at this next hour in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So uh, I want us to start. Today we're going to be talking about the, the title is um, 10 Prayers to strengthen our inner man. Ten prayers to strengthen our inner man. And the, the initial scripture that I want us to see is 3 John. So if you got your Bible, 3 John. I make 3 John, verse 1, 1 through 4. And he's a greeting to uh, John's friend. He says, The elder to beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, now I want you to see and pay attention to this prayer. I pray, John is praying for his friend Gaius. I pray that you may prosper in all things. And I checked in the original. It is literally all things. Be successful. Be successful in business. That you may do well. So it is not only, oh no, he's praying for his spiritual being. It's way more than that. Right? So I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health. Just as your soul prospers, for I rejoice greatly when brethren come, uh, came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. Just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. So he's relating to Gaius as his spiritual son. I have no greater joy than to hear that to my children uh, walking in the truth. Now, according to the Webster, right? According to the dictionary, uh, the definition of soul. So, first is the immaterial essence. And the second is the spiritual principle embodied in human beings. A person's total self. An active or essential part. The moral or emotional nature of human beings. The quality that arouses emotion and sentiment. And spiritual or moral force. So this is in the dictionary. Now, in the Greek word, is the Greek word where we got the word uh, psyche, which means breath. 
breath, the breath of life, the vital force uh, which an, uh, animates the body and shows itself in breathing of animals of men. Life. That in which there is life, a living being or a living soul. Now, I like this part of the definition because it says the seat of feelings, desires, affections, and dislikes. So when John is praying for Gaius, I pray that you may prosper and you be in good health, even as the seat of your feelings, and the seat of your desires, the seat of your affections, the seat of your dislikes are in good health. Amen? Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So the soul is an essence which differs from the body and is not dissolved by death, which is distinguished from other parts of the body. Amen. So now the thing is, according to this verse, very important, uh, if our soul, you know, which the seed of feelings, desires, affections and dislikes, if our soul is in good health and is prospering, eventually will affect how we live our lives. Amen. Amen. So since it's, it's that important that our soul, since it's that important that our inner man prosper because we're going to be a reflection of what is going on the inside and that's why we have so much things going on you know on the inside of us and why the enemy wants to attack our minds and our bodies and our health and the way we think the way that we talk the way that we see things so uh, it's very important it's 10 prayers uh that we're going to do it's very vital for our faith and to remember better uh, we're gonna see through the word fellowship which is going to be an acronym. Uh, what, what, what do you understand, Bella, by, by fellowship? Um, like for me, fellowship is like having like relationship, communion with like um, my brothers and sisters in Christ and my friends and um, just like spending t time together and um, yeah. Fellowship. Amen. I heard this today and I thought it was quite funny. Fellowship means two fellows that are on the ship. <laughs> Going to the same place. Because if they're not in agreement, they're not going to get there. Right? Because <laughs> fe two fellows that are on the ship, fellowship. Now, uh, we're going to use, so each word is going to represent something. Now, I want Bella to read from the Amplified Bible, the same scripture that we're talking about, 3 John 1, 1, 2, 3. And I want you to listen again. Uh, so that the initial verse. Go ahead, Bella. The elderly elder of the church addresses this letter to the beloved esteemed guys whom I truly love. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well, even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. In fact, I greatly rejoice when some of the brethren from time to time arrived and spoke so highly of the sincerity and fidelity of your life, as indeed you do and live in the truth. The whole gospel presents. So we see that the way that he was living, the, the, it, it would show. It would show in his actions. It would show in the way that he did life. And that's the goal. So if we're good on the inside, if everything should, where it's the place where it should be, we're going to see the reflection. We're going to see the results on the outside. Amen? Yeah. So truth uh, affected so much. That's what happened to him. Truth affected so much his inner life that others could see. Amen? Yeah. Now, one thing that we know is that our highest call is to fellowship with God. It's our highest call. Fellowship with God. Now, what happens in our inner man is what determines the quality of our fellowship with God and is the only thing that we bring from this life to the age to come. So, our inner man is our most important aspect of life and yet is usually uh, is the most neglected prayer focus. We don't see that much people praying you know, for, for, us, for the soul, right? I mean, I, hardly I see any prayer done uh, like that. So these 10 requests that we're going to share tonight, they are based on God's promises that require the work of the Spirit on our hearts. Amen? These 10 requests are based on God's promises that require the work of the Spirit on our hearts. Now, Ephesians 3.16 uh, says that may he grant you 
May He grant you out of the rich treasury of His glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit, Himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. Amen. I mean, that's pretty powerful right there. Amen. So let's, let's get on. Fellowship. Now, the letter F. F stands for the fear of God. F, fear of God. So the prayer in relation to that would be, Father, release the spirit of the fear of God into my heart. Release the lightning and thunder from your throne uh, to strike my heart with your majesty that I might live in awe before you. Release your presence and holy dread that makes me tremble before you. Unite my heart to your heart and word and cause me to delight in the fear of God. Amen. Now the verses for this, Jeremiah 32, 40. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from doing them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts so that they will not depart from me. Isaiah 8, 13. The Lord of hosts, regard him as holy and honor his holy name by regarding him as your only hope of safety. And let him be your fear and let him be your dread, lest you offend him by your fear of man and distrust of him. Psalms 86, 11. Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart, heart to fear your name. So when we pray that prayer, uh, here's just some of the scriptures. We could use more, but just so we know, you know, we're, we're praying the scripture. We're bringing to us why we're going to prosper as our soul. The way we think, the way that we are on the inside, desires, the, the lights, the frustrations, the things that goes on on the inside, the real you, I, I used to say. You know, so it's very important. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will. I mean, if the Lord teaches you, I'm sure he's a good teacher. Uh, if the Lord teaches you, teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. So again, fellowship, let, letter E. E, right? Yeah. <laughs> For a moment, I, I was thinking Portuguese because it uh, sounds a little bit different. It's E in, in English, E, endurance. Endurance related to patience. Father, strengthen my spirit with endurance. How many of us need that at this hour? Strengthen my spirit with endurance that I may do your will with zeal and diligence and that I not quit pursuing the deep things of God. And we know the Word of God says that deep calleth unto deep. And that's why, that's why we like to call uh, every Wednesday, uh, you know, diving into the Word of God because we want to go deeper. We want to know the truth. We want to know things that go deep in the things of God. So that's why on Wednesday, it's, it's just like we get into the Word of God, a lot of scriptures. But I know, I, and I hope you, you write them down so you can meditate on them later. So uh, impart endurance for fasting. Amen. When was the last time you fast? I'm not talking about like one meal. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking about a real fast, like a day, two or three, you know. Uh, impart endurance for fasting. Direct my heart into the endurance in which Jesus walked. Wouldn't that be great? Direct my heart into the endurance in which Jesus walked. I mean, that alone. If we receive that impartation. I mean, wasn't he patient? Isn't he patient today? Right? I mean, with you and me. So this is a prayer for strength to follow through in my commitments to God and to fulfill my ministry calling when it's difficult. Now the scriptures for that, Colossians 1.11. We pray that you may be invigorated and strengthened with all power according to the might of His glory to exercise every kind of endurance and patience, perseverance and forbearance with joy. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 3, 5. May the Lord direct your hearts into realizing and showing the love of God and into the steadfastness and patience of Christ 
and in waiting for his return. Now, the first one, Colossians 1.11, we pray that you may be invigorated. Can you imagine that? We pray that you may be invigorated and strengthened with all power. What would that do if that prayer manifests, uh, if this verse manifests in our lives today? Invigorated, strengthened with all power according to the might of His glory. So it is in Him, it's not in us. So it's not like the, it goes beyond feelings. But if I'm receiving that impartation in my soul, the way that I think, the way that it, I'm on the inside, to exercise every kind of endurance and patience. So, and I know, it's hard. The, the older we get, it's harder to exercise, right? I mean, the younger too, right? Yeah. It takes a lot of discipline, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah, to motivation. Motivation. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've got to be kind of self-driven. Driven, driven yeah. right? Because <laughs> yeah. I've heard you say, like, for the last two months, <laughs> I'm serious, this is, this is the truth, right? Yeah. I need to get in shape. Yeah. Dad, help me. Yeah. I, I, need, I want to exercise with you, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not only a, a, a yeah. thing of older people. Yeah, right? I think everybody needs motivation, endurance to keep going on. But you got to be self driven. Driven. Yeah. I like that word. Amen. So it is like in every kind of endurance and patience, perseverance and forbearance with joy. It, we got to exercise. You know, so it's, it's not, again, the muscle is not going to develop if we don't exercise. How do we exercise? We're going to go through things in life that God is going to give us another opportunity. Okay, we blew it. Blew it yesterday. Blew it last week. Blew it a month ago or a year ago. Okay, so now, <laughs> you know, it's like a circle. You go around again. Okay, can we pass this test? Because it is an exercise. And then we grow. Amen. So, again, it, it takes the power of God uh, not to quit. It takes the power of God. Amen? So, it's like, you know, it's more than that, oh, okay, willpower, or I can do this, or confessing, you know, walking back and forth, oh, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it, and then you don't do it. So, if we do not quit in our fervent pursuit, we win. Romans 15.5. Now may the God who gives the power of patient endurance... Okay, read that again, because this is... Look. Now the God who gives the power of patient endurance, uh -huh. steadfastness, and who supplies encouragement, grant you to live in such, such mutual harmony and such full sympathy with one another in accord with Christ Jesus. Amen. It comes from God. May the God who gives the power of patience. So if you say, oh, I don't have patience. Yeah, it's because you don't, but it, doesn't, it shouldn't come from you. Now, may the God who gives the power of patient endurance. It comes from Him. So that's why you're trying for so many years and it's not working. Because you're tapping into yourself instead of tapping into God, His resource it says that in who supplies encouragement, He would grant you to live in such a mutual harmony. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Romans 5, 3. Moreover, let us also be full of joy now. Let us exult and triumph in our troubles and rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that pressure and affliction and hardship produce patient and unwavering endurance. So again, it's like how, how, the, how is that produced in our lives? It comes from rejoicing during difficult seasons. Right? Mm -hmm. Say that with me. <laughs> it comes <laughs> from rejoicing, rejoicing during, during difficult <laughs> seasons. seasons. Okay, let's do that again. It, <laughs> it comes, comes from, from rejoicing, rejoicing during difficult seasons. There you go. You got it. Moreover, let us also be full of joy. Now, let us exult and triumph in our troubles. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. Not easy. You know, because it's not only the troubles that we go through, but the troubles that we create. Right? Yeah. I mean, everything was fine until Saturday, 12 o'clock. And I don't know if there was any sign. I was trying to remember that day, don't play basketball. Don't go. There might be a sign, right? What? I mean, that you, guys, you thought about it in the first yeah. place? Yeah. I mean, you guys went... 
somewhere, didn't you? The you know, pumpkin patch. Pumpkin patch. I should have gone with them. I said, no, no, I wouldn't have fellowship. I can do this. The Lord is my help, you know. <laughs> and then if I had gone, I'm sure I would not have tripped. And I mean, you know. Yeah. So uh, let us exalt and triumph in our troubles and rejoice in our suffering, knowing that's, that's the part that usually we don't know. And I always say that because it's the truth. You will know the truth and the truth that you know. So knowing that the pressure, the affliction, and hardship, knowing that the pressure, the affliction, and hardship, or whatever you're going through, put on those three categories. Knowing that the pressure, the affliction, and the hardship produce patient and unwavering endurance. Hallelujah. Now, next letter, love. Father, pour out your love into my heart by releasing the influences of the Spirit. Give me revelation of your love for me. What, what, isn't that a powerful prayer? Give me revelation of your love for me, that it may overflow in love back to you and to others. Unraveling. Revelation. It comes to light. I didn't know. It was in the darkness. Revelation comes. Light is shown. Then it's like, give me revelation of your love for me that it may overflow in love back. So with the revelation that he gives me, I love him back and I love one another. And I love others. Romans 5, 5. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. Who was given to us. Amen. So, I mean, that's why it's so important, the communion of the Holy Spirit. How can we receive that if that is saying that because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit? So the more I commune, the more fellowship I have with the Holy Spirit, I'm going to understand this better. The more love I'm going to have in my life, and more I'm going to exercise that love towards God and towards others. Uh, Philippians 1.9 and this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment. So it's a prayer. You can look and read Philippians 1 9. And this I pray that your love may abound. Lord, allow your love to abound. Allow your love to abound in my life, in my children, in my wife, in our congregation. Lord, allow your love. I'm praying the scripture, Philippians 1 9. It's still more and more in knowledge, because it, it is through our knowing, and all discernment. 2 Thessalonians 3, 5. May the Lord direct your hearts into realizing and showing the love of God, and into the steadfastness and patience of Christ in, in waiting for His return. May the Lord direct your hearts into realizing and showing the love of God. Amen? So it, it, again, it always goes back to the heart, yeah. the inner man. The inside, and again, that's what we're talking about. Ten prayers to strengthen your inner man, because you're going to prosper. It is in Proverbs as well, right? That we, uh, as a man think, right? In his heart, so he will be. So he goes back to the heart. So again, Father, impart your love for Jesus in my heart. According to John 17, 26, I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. Amen. So it's like uh, we got to agree with Jesus' prophecy. We got to agree with Matthew 22, 37. And receive the grace to love God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind. Amen? So okay. it's like, Father, allow me to understand Jesus' love for me and to abide in it. What, is that? what, what does that mean? To stay connected to it. Now, Ephesians 3, uh, 17 and 9 through 19. Ephesians 3, 17 through 19. That's right. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So, it's not going to be possible to understand, right? According to that? Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's something that you receive in your spirit, mm -hmm. right? 
so that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith, and we know that faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God, that you being rooted, and again, I always say that because there's no fruit if there's no root. And if you're not happy with the fruit, you're going to have to uproot some things, put the right seeds back into the ground, and wait. Because being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend. So, you know, I guess if we don't have strength, it's, not, it's going to be hard to comprehend. With all the saints, that is the breadth and length and height and depth. I mean, this is like a big construction. And to know the love of Christ, so it is possible to know, but it's not going to be through knowledge. Right? And to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. That's good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. Are you getting some? Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so, Father, let me see and love myself through your eyes. Thank you for who I am to you. Wouldn't that, I mean, that alone. How many people, they, they would like to be different and they... That there's so much, um, how do you say it? There's so much self-hatred, self -hatred, condemnation, yeah. guilt, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, sure. Because it's, it's like, let me see and love myself through your eyes. What do you see in me? Help me to see myself how you see me. Amen? Mm -hmm. So Psalms 139, uh, verse 13, it's a Psalm of David. For you formed my inward parts, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. Oh, say that again. <laughs> for you formed my inward parts, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I mean, David's amazing. Because through prayer, meditation, and singing, what, does it, how, what, what happens there? He's stepping into the Spirit of God. He's receiving that impartation. And again, it's like it goes back to his soul. And that's why you see, I mean, he had a lot of struggles in, inside, inside of him. But he would turn back to God and he would see God. And then that's why in his Psalms, I mean, a few weeks back, you could see that crazy progression. I mean, it was weird that he goes from fear to fury to faith in one prayer, in one Psalm. You know, so again, it's like he, he was not afraid to share how he was feeling. But then he would confess to God. He would possess, he would take by faith. Okay, God, since I, I, I let this go, I'm going to confess what you say about me. And he would, that's why I was in Ziklag when everything was burned, that everybody wanted to stone him. He is strengthened himself in the Lord. So you've you got to go back. You've got to know how to go back on the inside of you. And that's why you've got to think about what you're thinking about. And you've got to be able to talk to yourself. And sometimes you've got to talk yourself out of whatever you, you know, your thoughts are going through. The process of your thinking, you know. Uh, so, uh, again, it's like my inward parts, it goes back to the inside. You needed me together in my mother's womb. So, you're not just a blob, right? Is that how yeah. you say it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why we're strongly against abortion. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, come on. David said that about God. For you formed it in my, in my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully, wonderfully made. You are. Amen. All of you that are watching, those that are going to watch later, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. So speak, stop speaking down on yourself. Stop cursing yourself. Wonderful are your works. So in other words, we're like a, right? We're a piece of art. Yes. Masterpiece. <laughs> a masterpiece. There you go. My soul, again, he goes back to the inside, knows it very well. So Father, when I'm praying, Father, I agree with Jesus. I agree with Jesus' command and prophecy in Matthew twenty-two thirty-nine 39, that I will love others. 
Let me abound in love by seeing what you see and by feeling what you feel about others. Oh man, can you imagine what would happen? If, if, I'm not talking about one individual, one person. I'm talking about everybody. If we pray like this and if we begin to see, you know, beyond the pain, beyond the hurt, beyond the wound, beyond what we see, beyond the nastiness. I mean, if we see how God sees and we see the potential and we see that we all, and God is not done yet. Amen. So he's still working in each one of us. Amen. So Matthew 22, 38 says, this is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. In 1 Thessalonians 3.12. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all just as we do to you. So it is possible and it should be possible that we're not stuck. Mm-hmm. We should start somewhere, but again, according to this, it's like, May the Lord make you increase and abound in love. So maybe your tank is half empty, you know. And you're, maybe you don't have, your, your love tank is like empty. And that's why you are the way you are. But again, that's a good prayer. It's like, okay, God, help me do this. First Thessalonians 3.12. Your word says, the Lord will make me increase in abounding love to one another, to all, just as we do to you. So it should increase. We should never be stuck in our spiritual walk with God. Amen. Next letter, uh, letter L, fellowship, L, light of glory, light of glory. Father, let me see the light of your glory or to encounter the glory realm. Man, what would happen if we all go through this? Give me your Holy Spirit or give me Holy Spirit encounters, dreams, visions, angelic visitations, manifestations of light, fire, and wind. What, what does that represent? I mean, light, in the Word of God, it, it, it points to revelation. Light, fire, cleansing, purification, the wind, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, as you gave Moses, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and John. Well, there's a bunch of scriptures there. You know, but we're not going to go through all of them. As you gave to Moses, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and John. Now, Acts 22, Acts 22, verse 6 through 11. Now it happened as I journeyed and came near Damascus at about noon. Suddenly a great light from heaven shone around me, and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So I answered, Who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. So that's the encounter. And now Paul The Apostle Paul, he's testifying about the encounter that he had with Jesus on his way to Damascus. He brought him down. He humbled him. He had letters. He was persecuting the church. It's beautiful. He was breathing murderous threats. He was going against the church, which was called the way. And you see that, I mean, that encounter with God, it changed the whole dynamic in his life. Changed everything. You know, and I do believe that we need more encounters like that. I do believe that we need to pray that we would all, not some of us, but that we would feel the reality, that we would grasp what God wants us to do, what He has for each one of us individually. Amen. So when we come together, it's going to be like celebration. He continued on and He said, And those who were with me indeed saw the light and were afraid, but they did not hear the voice of Him who spoke to me. So I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, Arise and go into Damascus, and there you will be told all the things which are appointed for you to do. And since I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of those who were with me, I came into Damascus. And I do believe he got blind by that light. I really do. And that's why, um, what was the disciple that went to pray for him? Um, Was it Ananias? Ananias, good. Yeah. I just wanted to know if you (laughs) You know, and Ananias, when he goes, and it was quite amazing because he didn't want to go. And he was kind of, do you know who he is, Lord? Have you heard what he's done against? the church, your disciples, you know. So Ananias was kind of like, I'm not sure if I should pray for this guy, you know, especially for him to see if he's blind. Yoo-hoo, praise God. I mean, I don't know. I always think about that, you know. But I think that, and, and then God said, no, go, because he's a chosen vessel. And he didn't go, but then Jesus said to him, and I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. Right? 
So he's like, oh, he's going to suffer. Hallelujah. You know. Uh, Exodus 33, 17. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, please show me your glory. Oh, what a prayer. Well, I mean, we don't hear that hardly today. Lord, show me your glory. Moses wanted to see. That was his prayer. Show me your glory. Psalms 4, 6. There are many who say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. Psalms 43, 3. Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. I mean, can you see how, how God's light, God's truth, let them lead me? Let them bring me to your, to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Psalms 119, 130. The entrance of your words gives light. It oh, gives I love this understanding one. to the simple. Because right there, the entrance of your words gives light. Now, we know the entrance. What are the, the I always say about this, is the eye gate. Oh, wait up, let me just. The eye gate, the ear gate, and the mouth gate. The entrance of your words gives light. Mm -hmm. The entrance of your words brings revelation. The entrance of your words brings illumination. The entrance of your words, so if you don't want to hear it, if you're offended, especially, right? It's very hard that someone that's offended is going to receive anything from anybody. You know, I mean, if you're offended at someone, do you think, even if they speak the truth, even if an angel comes and, you, and you know, it gives you something, you're going to be, no, not going to hear it, because you're offended. Mm -hmm. So you got to shake it off. You know, I, I always say this. You're never going to receive something from someone you don't respect. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, that's not going to happen. You know, so you got to shake it off. you got to talk to God. you got to get it right. If you need, go to the person, talk to the person. But uh, again, how you're expecting your life to grow and to progress and to go to different realms of glory, from glory to glory, from faith to faith, if you're stuck. But he did this. But she said that. But this is happening. But look what he did. But look what they're talking about me. Okay, I'm not putting that down. But if you want more of God, you're going to have to let it go. You're going to have to get over those things. Because God has more in store than whatever happened. And God, it, it, it is like, it's, it's just like the Apostle Paul, right? Forgetting those things which are behind. It's like he, he said, I, I didn't grasp the whole thing. But one thing I do. Forgetting what is behind, I move on. I move forward towards the mark. So it's two things. It's not only forgetting. You, got, you have to have something uh, that will help you move forward. Amen? Is everybody still there? Wave at me if you're still there. We get a little. Yeah. Stop a little for, for a little bit. So again, uh, which one was the last song we read? Um, Can I kind of ask what you're saying? Or, uh, Can I add something sure, to what sure. you're saying? Well, because like, as we're going like through all the letters, it's like really cool to see the way they're all kind of, we have to have all of them together for us to like really like get to that place of fellowship with the Lord. Because as you see, like we're reading all these Psalms and those are like all David who wrote them. And like you see that his honesty with himself is vulnerability with the Lord is what really like, um, helps him to understand the heart of the Lord for himself and for others. And so he was able to speak from that place of truth to like speak all those words that the entrance of your words gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. Like he wouldn't be able to understand that unless he understood the heart of the Lord for him and that he wanted, now he wants to share that with everybody else. So yeah, it's really cool. Cause That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So he just got that revelation. He could not say what he was saying if he didn't get in his spirit. Yeah. Amen. So it was not only like he heard someone say it. He got it, yeah. but he, doesn't, he, he, he didn't want only for himself. He wanted more people to experience that reality. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Amen. Again, uh, Psalms 119, 130. The entrance and unfolding of your words gives light. The unfolding gives understanding, discernment, and comprehension to the soul. Okay, that's in the Amplified Bible. It's the same verse. So the first one, the entrance of your words gives light. The Amplified Bible says, the entrance and unfolding. 
the entrance and unfolding, thanks Al, the entrance and unfolding of your words gives light. Their unfolding gives understanding, discernment, and comprehension to the simple. Now, I love this one. 2 Kings 6, 16. So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. I, I like that for various reasons. Number one, you see that the prophet he could see, he did not need to see to know that the, 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 the presence of God and those who were with him was more. We see that the young man that was learning and was like a, his disciple, the disciple of the prophet, he couldn't see, so he saw in the natural. So he goes back to the prophet, he tells what he saw, and he says that Elisha prayed. And I truly believe this. You know, just like I, I was praying and praying for healing, it wasn't happening. Pray, 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 it didn't happen. This is like 92, 93. And then someone that had the gift of healing prayed for me, and after that, it started happening. I believe this. So if you're under uh, someone that has a prophetic anointing or if it has a teaching anointing or if it has a pastoral anointing or has a apostolic anointing, whatever you're sitting and you, and you recognize because, you know, if you receive a man of God as a man of God, if you receive a, a pastor as a pastor, you receive a pastor's reward. This is powerful. The way that you receive, you know, not only in our church, but whatever church you go to, whatever, the way that you receive your spiritual leadership, the way that you receive is going to determine the, the reward that you're going to have. So if you receive just as someone that's there, you're not going to receive much. But when you tap into this, and that's what I believe, Elisha and this young man, his young man received him as a prophet, so he got a prophet's reward, which was what? Elisha prayed and he said, Lord, I pray, the man of God, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened. I mean, you don't see a second prayer. You don't see like, oh, Lord, please, please, please. Oh, Lord, he's so blind. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, or like we say here in the South, oh, Lord, bless his heart. Right? <laughs> <laughs> then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. So he was young in, in, in his faith, in his walk with God. And behold, the mountains was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Hallelujah. I love that. Uh, letter O, which stands for one thing life focus. One thing life focus. Father, strengthen me to maintain a life in your word with the desire for it. When I lose this focus, send your word to deliver me as you did for the saints of Ephesus, Sardis, and Laodicea. Alert me when I need to recommit my schedule and priorities to leave as a person of one thing who regularly sits at your feet as Mary of Bethany did. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Luke 10, 41. Luke 10, 41. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. One thing is needed. How may, I mean, how many of us do that? How, how many of us sit at the feet of Jesus and, and just want to hear it and have communion and fellowship with Him? One thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part. And Psalms 27, 4. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. Hallelujah. Mm. Amen. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek. So you got to go after it. Mm -hmm. It's not like, uh, is it, it was Moses? What? It happens just by like... <laughs> oh, I don't remember. <laughs> right? I, I think that's the word. Said, okay, God, I want it. I want it, Lord. It's going to happen just because you, yeah. you do nothing. Yeah. you got to go after it. Seek, yeah. and you shall find. That you may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His holy temple. Next letter, W. Worthy. Count me worthy. Faithfulness unto fullness. Father, strengthen me to walk in a way that you would consider me worthy. 
to walk in my highest calling, escape all compromise that I might stand before you victorious and in full obedience. Now the scriptures for that, 2 Thessalonians 1, 11. Therefore we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling. See, it's a prayer. Say that again. Therefore we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling. And, that, and fulfill all the good pleasure of His goodness and the work of faith with power. Luke 21, 36. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Now we know that no one is worthy, amen, to receive forgiveness. Uh, it's, a, it's a free gift because of Jesus' worthiness. It's, it's not because of us. It's because of, of, it's because of Him. So uh, we're... we're uh, we are to have a worthy response to God by leaving a free of compromise. Mm -hmm. so it's like, you know, that's how we, we're worthy to walk in the fullness of our calling. Mm -hmm. I embrace what He did. I receive His forgiveness. I'm, I'm forgiven. I accept it, and I'm going to walk in it. Yeah. Amen? You want to say anything? Uh, yeah. I feel like... Um kind of going the point before like about like approaching the throne of God like sometimes we're going through something and we're like oh I can't hear God or like I'm just struggling so much in my walk with the Lord but it's like sometimes we're in the valley and we don't just stand up and go to his throne and like instead of pressing in and going deeper with him we're just like oh this this, is, this sucks so it much. is what but, it is yeah and like we should be going to his it. throne yeah when we realize that he's the one who makes us worthy it's not our own it's selves a good point. like you yeah. have to go to his throne and like acknowledge like he's given you this free gift and uh -huh. we need to take hold of like his because of his worthiness he makes us worthy and that's so good. Um, yeah. Isn't she beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Uh, now the, the opposite of having a worthy response is to waste or receive God's grace in vain. Watch Second Corinthians six one. We then, as workers together with Him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. Yeah. You know, if you don't use it, you lose it. So it's like you've you got to ask God to help you keep free from compromise. Mm -hmm. That you would walk blameless in body, soul, and spirit. Amen? You've got to pray for those things. It, it's, it doesn't happen automatically. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it is possible. Amen? Why? He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. If he calls you, yes, he's faithful, and he who also will do it. Now, we agree with the prayer of David to walk in purity. Amen? That's in Psalms 51.10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. So he realized after his sin with Bathsheba, he blew it. Something happened to his heart. And only God could give him a clean heart. And sometimes that's what we got to do. Just go back to God. God, I, I need, it's, it's it, you know, just uh, doing a defrag won't do it. You need a new hard drive. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So we agree. And again, it's a resolve. David had to resolve uh, to, to, you know, to do this thing. Psalms 101, verse 3. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. Job said the same thing in Job 31, 1. I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why should I look on a woman? Amen. So it is a, a resolve. It, it's, you know, it, it, it is a resolve. You've got to do it. Speak it. You've got to pray it. You've got to say it. You've got to do it. Amen. So it's like, Lord, lead me from the storm of temptation. Rescue me from its deep waters. Cleanse me from the secret faults. Search me and show me my heart. Now watch the next psalm. psalm psalms 19, verse 12. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Secret faults. Things that is there that we don't know, or sometimes if we know we're hiding it. Who can understand his errors? Psalms 139, verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. Psalm 69, 1 to 3. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up, come up to my neck. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I have come into deep waters. 
where the floods overflow me, I am weary with my crying, my throat is dry, my eyes fail while I wait for my God. So he would always go back, I wait for my God. I wait for my God. Search me, O God. Know my heart. Try me. Know my anxieties. Know my desires. Amen. Next letter, fellowship, is the letter S, speech. Father, set a guard over my lips. Free me from defensive, angry, and foolish speech. Ephesians 4, 29. Let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others, as is fitting to the need and the occasion, that it may be a blessing and give grace, God's favor, to those who hear it. Amen. Hallelujah. So we, we see that we can quench the Spirit, you know, by the way that we talk. And that's why we got to be careful. Ephesians 5, 4. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. I, I always say that. Um, you know, sometimes you see, I mean, I, I don't know. Because I, I, I think I see more in, in Brazil that people that speak Portuguese, they want to do the stand-up comedy with, uh, you know, with the Bible and Bible characters. And pff, nine out of ten doesn't go well, you know. Because they end up being crude jokes. I don't think God is pleased with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, sometimes, once in a while, you see that in the U.S. But you, we got to be careful, especially when, it's, you know, oh, I know this joke, and that person knows that joke, and, and then it, it kind of escalates, mm -hmm. and it gets nastier and nastier, and I, the Lord is not pleased with that. Mm -hmm. So we really got to be careful with that. Amen? So again, to, to sustain a communion with God, it requires restrained conversation with one another. Amen. James 3, 2. For we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man. Perfect man. Perfect woman. Able also to bridle his whole body. Yeah, so it's not easy. Psalms 141, verse 2. Let my prayer be continued as incense before you, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Wouldn't that be great? Can you imagine if you're about to say something stupid, and there's like an angel there like... <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Yeah, it would be good. Or you, just, you just feel a little like, oops, okay, yeah. I'm not going to say yeah. that, Lord. Sorry, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Psalms 19, 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The words and the meditation. So what I say and what I'm thinking about, I'm going to say, right? Psalms 39, 1. I said, I will guard my ways that I may not sin with my tongue. I will guard my mouth with a muzzle so long as the wicked are in my presence. Oh, that, that one would take a different uh, connotation right now, right? You got your mask? No, I don't. <laughs> I <swear laughs> my Look at that. I'm, I'm serious. This is not the ESV translation. I will said, I will guard my ways that I may not sin with my tongue. I will guard my mouth with a muzzle. <laughs> I mean, that should, you know, that should tell us something. When you see people at Walmart, when you see everybody, because that's what it looks like, right? It looks like a muzzle, doesn't it? The yeah. face mask. So it should be a reminder like, oh, that person was, you know, he was going to say something like blank, blank, but he's wearing a muzzle, right? People say less with mask on. So <laughs> yeah, even with the mask on, but yeah. it should be a good reminder. Like, it, yeah, I mean... Mm. It. I will guard my mouth with a muzzle. So anoint your, mu anoint your mask, <laughs> put some oil in it, and it's like, okay, I'm not going to say it. So long as the wicked are in my presence. Letter H, humility. Jesus, I want to learn from you how to walk in loneliness. Um, oh, Lord. Yeah, we're going to have to fix this because any person that calls me, it's there because we're doing a live, right? It's so, so Jesus, I want to learn from you how to walk in loneliness. I commit to take your yoke of humility, loneliness of heart on my life and my attitudes, speech and actions. Give me wisdom on how to carry my heart in humility. It's a process and it's learning and it takes time. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But you see, the rest for the soul that we talked in the beginning, I pray that you may uh, be prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. So it's important that you rest on the inside. Because sometimes you, you go to bed, you fall asleep, or you sleep all day long, but you're not resting. So you wake up, you're still tired. Because it's not tired physically, it's tired mentally. It's tired on your soul. And how do we do that? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. So he wants to teach us. For I am gentle, lowly in heart, and you will find rest. So if we're learning from Jesus, we shouldn't get desperate over every little thing that takes place in our lives. We should see his example. Amen? Amen. Philippians 2, 3. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Have this mind, part of the soul. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Letter I, insight unto intimacy which is wisdom, insight unto intimacy. Father, give me insight into your word, your will, and your ways. Just remember, www, right? Which is, what word. would Jesus do? Oh. What would <laughs> Jesus do? No, no, www. <laughs> WWGID. I thought you were talking about the yeah. word will. Well, it would be like, what? Father, give me insight to your word, to your will, and to your ways. Yeah. So, which is the, 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 the website thing, right? www. So when you see that, yeah, your word, your will, and your ways. Give me wisdom on how to live before you that I may walk in intimacy, in union with you. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 1, 16. I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. So he's praying for the church and he's saying, uh, the Father of glory may give you the spirit of wisdom. What would happen if each one of us, if we have the spirit of wisdom, revelation of the knowledge in Him? Revelation. Revolution. Colossians 1.9 And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. See? So it's not just like, oh, I don't know what's the will of God for my life. Well... You have to pray, and people have to pray over you that this scripture would be fulfilled. That from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you. So it's not a one-day prayer. It's a continual prayer. One of the best things is to know what God wants you to do. Because He does have a plan for each one of our lives. Asking that you may be filled. Asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will. Asking that you may be filled to the overflow. So it's like everything you do, everything you say, everything you, uh, you know. So it's like everything in your life is going to be connected to the will because you're filled of it. You're full of the will of God. It's not your will. Isn't that, I mean, it's hard, but we do pray for that. Not my will, but thine be done. You know, so yes, it's thy will, Lord. Then it's like, yeah, if we're full of the will of God, filled with the knowledge of His will, in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Again, Father, give me insight. I mean, that's a short prayer that you can pray any time of the day. Give me insight that I may walk under the Spirit's leadership, that we may partner together in every issue in my life, including finances, and schedules, emotions, circumstances, physical body, my diet, my health, my relationships, in the home, in the office, in the ministry, my future, my fears, my addictions, everything. Give me new ideas in each area of my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. John 14, 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. The Helper, the Holy Spirit. Amen? So it's like, Father, I long to walk in the fullness of your will in every area of my life. Colossians 4.12 Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, 
a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you, always struggling on your behalf in his prayers, that you may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. Amazing that he struggle. Yeah. He struggle in the behalf of others in his prayers. Yeah. When was the last time you did that? No, no, for real. It's like, oh man, I'm struggling for this person. I'm praying so hard. Oh Lord, open his eyes, open his eyes, open his eyes. You know, it's like, ah, that's what he did. Epaphras, Epaphras, Epaphras. Epaphras. You see, yeah. that's a, it's a good name if you're pregnant or something. <laughs> I don't know how how would you call a short name of that? Epi. Epi. Yeah. Or Epa. Or oh, Fra-fra. little Epa. <laughs> or little. Uh, okay, forget it. <laughs> that you may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. Okay. Psalms. Say sure, like, sure, go ahead. Well, like, because he's in the verse before, he's talking, Paul's like saying, he's continually thanking God for this church. And it's like, he never stops. He's never stopped being thankful for them. He's always interceding for them. And so I think it just shows how powerful it is to be praying over, like, um, other people in your congregation, your brothers and sisters in Christ, like, always, like, interceding for people. And because then you'll eventually get to see their breakthrough also. And, like, yeah. Um, I feel like it's so important to like be in tune with the Lord and what He wants to do in like other people's lives, see what He's speaking to you to bless others with, and like I don't know, it's and hard to just be always thankful for people. It, it is, but but sometimes it's like it comes in a thought. Yeah. Right out of nowhere, you think about a person mm-hmm. or someone that sometimes you're not even in contact, direct contact yeah. with that person, and it, it just seems like drops in your spirit. Mm-hmm. Pray for that person. Pray that their eyes of their understanding be open. Pray that God would give them wisdom. Pray that they would be, that they would see with clarity, that they would know the highs, the depth, the deep, you know, how high, how, you know, all those things of the love of God. So it is like the moment you, a name or someone comes to mind, or even if you forget the name of the person, but the person comes into your mind, Lord, I bless that person right now. I don't know what they're going through. But I pray that you give them whatever they need. I pray for a breakthrough. I cover them in prayer in Jesus' name. Those yeah. prayers are powerful. Powerful. And sometimes, you know, days later, you, you, you might even know that that person was going through something at that very moment that you were praying for. Very powerful. Uh, next verse, um, Psalms twenty-five, fourteen. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear Him, and He makes known to them His covenant. He will show you. Psalms uh, 25, 4 and 5. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Yeah, it, th- that's, the, that's the, the hardest part, the waiting part. Mm-hmm. But we got to do it. Now, letter P, we're almost done. Fellowship, peace and joy. Father, strengthen my heart with supernatural peace and joy that overpowers Fear and anxiety that I would not sin. Amen? So, I mean, that, that's pretty much what it is. Because sin grows fast is when we fear or anxiety works strongly in us. Okay, so Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. Right there. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So you're not going to understand. When God gives you that, even in the midst of chaos, it's like, I don't even know how I'm feeling like this. Yeah, that's God. It is possible. You know, I've said that. I said it last week, and I'm going to say it again, because I do believe it's the power of prayer. When the COVID began, we were praying I mean, we did lots of lives. Every day for three months, we were praying. We're pleading the blood of Jesus. We're declaring protection. We're declaring health. We were rebuking the sickness and disease. I mean, you can check. I'm I'm not exaggerating. There's like out of a town that has 12,000 people, right? 11,000 were tested. Yeah, or town. There was about 900 positive. Mm -hmm. And the person who died, he wasn't even here. They were up in Chicago. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's what happened. It's one case of death. Mm -hmm. Out of 12,000. But we prayed, we fast, we declared the word of God. 
I, I would drive to, there's three exits, I mean, there's only three in our town. I would go to those entrances and I would declare the Word of God. We went to the cross time and time again, declaring, blessing the city, blessing the authorities, blessing the hospital, blessing the doctors, blessing the nurses, blessing the police department, blessing the fire department, blessing all the businesses. We would go and lay our hands and declare the Word of God. And I believe it worked. Don't you? Yeah. That was pretty powerful, it right? Was, yeah. Out of 12,000 people, only one. Mm -hmm. You know, and I do believe we're going to continue under that promise. I, we're going to continue. It's a promise of God. You know, you have not because you ask not. Mm -hmm. So we ask, we call forth, we prophesy, we stand upon the Word of God, and we're seeing, I mean, crazy results. We are. Amen? So we really, really, really need to pray. And I, and I always believe that whatever God puts you, whatever city, whatever town, whatever state, it's like you are the watchman on the wall. Mm -hmm. yeah. You are. So what are you seeing? Are you going to come in agreement with death? Are you going to be afraid? Or are you going to walk in faith? Are you going to walk in God? Not because of what, I am something, I'm nothing. But I know who I am in Him, and I know the confidence that I have with Him. And that's what makes the difference. Amen? Isaiah 26, 3. You will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace, whose mind, both its inclination and its character, is stayed right on there, him. Right there, in the mind. You will guard and keep him in perfect and constant peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he commits himself to you, leans on you, and hopes confidently in you. Romans 15, 13. May the God of your hope so fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound and be overflowing, bubbling over with hope. Amen. We need that. And last scripture, and we're done. 2 Thessalonians 3.16 Now may the Lord of peace himself grant you his peace, the kingdom, wait, yeah, the peace of his kingdom at all times and in all ways, under all circumstances and conditions, whatever comes. The Lord be with you all. Amen. That's the Amplified Bible. That's why it has those. Now may the Lord of peace, the Lord, He's the Lord of peace Himself, grant you His peace. That's a good ending prayer for tonight. May the Lord of peace Himself grant you His peace, the peace of His kingdom, at all times, in all ways, under all circumstances and conditions, whatever comes, the Lord of peace be with you all. Amen. I hope you're blessed by this message tonight. And again, I hope to see you Sunday, 10 o'clock. We're going to have a powerful service. It's the first Sunday, right? Yep. So we're going to have communion. Amen. I hope you can join us. Have communion with us. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you need, we have plenty of space. Yes, you can sit six feet apart. You can have a mask. You can have whatever. We have all those things here. We have the, the alcohol gel thing. I mean, and we always make sure that everything is taken care of. I really hope to see you Sunday. Again, thank you for my beautiful daughter Welcome. that joined me. Her insight is always awesome. I mean, she's only 17. And the thing, when she wants to talk, go ahead, you know, because I know it's good stuff. So I hope you have a, an awesome night. We love you. We're praying for you. Amen. And we're expecting great and mighty things. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So Lord, we pray that this, everything that we share tonight, that we can go over again, that we can meditate, that we can learn. Lord, this acronym, fellowship, what is the meaning of each letter and how powerful it is to strengthen our inner man. Lord, I pray for a good night of sleep. I pray that you touch those who need healing. I pray that you would continue to protect our town. I pray, Lord God, that we would walk in divine revelation. I pray that we will walk in divine peace in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Have a good night. Good night. Amen.